So usually when you're studying something in school, uh, you study a particular subject for a couple of weeks maybe, and then you move on to the next one. So for example, in, in mathematics, you might be studying logarithms uh, and learn things about them. And then you, you go on to the next one and the next subject, and then you you maybe never come back to logarithms again later. And this is actually um, a quite bad way of, of studying uh, because you're you're putting a lot of repetition uh, into it, but you're doing all the repetition at the same time. So you might yeah, like really count a lot of uh, examples with logarithms, but you're doing it only for one week, and then you move on to the next subject and the next subject. And then after some weeks, you might have forgotten all about logarithms. Uh, so that is why it is much better to use a kind of spaced repetition uh, in which you you study something, and then you, you uh, study it a little later, and then you, you wait some some longer period and study it again, and then an even longer period. Uh, and then you can actually remember a lot more um, by uh, by using the, the same effort and the same time, simply by spacing your repetitions instead of doing all the repetition at the same time. So for example, if you're studying for an exam, uh, you shouldn't really wait until the, the final night before the exam and then read through the things in your book seven times, but instead you should start uh, start doing it early, like you should should learn it early and then you, you repeat it maybe after one day and then after one week and then after one month. And then by, by just repeating it with, with longer and longer intervals in between, uh, you'll make sure that you, you remember them, uh, this information. And yeah, every time that you, you repeat, you'll, uh, you'll make the information uh, more stuck in your mind. And then you can wait a longer period until you have to repeat again. And then you'll wait even longer and even longer. And in the end, you'll have this information in your brain uh, forever. And to keep track of, of when you're supposed to repeat, you can use uh, apps. There are a lot of apps and, and computer software that you can use that, that you just put the information that you want to, to memorize inside these apps or the software, and then it will calculate when you need to repeat it to actually have to repeat it as, as rarely as possible, uh, but to still make sure that it will stay in your brain as long as you do repetitions sometimes. Um, but yeah, the good news about this is that um, you actually don't have to repeat that much, um, just as long as you know exactly when and how to repeat. So it's sort of a smart way of repeating. Uh, and I'll, refer, I'll um, explain this smart repetition, um, which makes, like the idea is that you put as little effort as possible into it and get as big results as possible out of it. So this smart repetition, it's based on, on um, uh, science from the 19th century, actually. Uh, it's a, a German uh, psychologist uh, named Hermann Ebbinghaus, who, uh, who did a lot of studies on, on people's memories. And um, yeah, he, he did just the, the, the thing that you, you would do if you wanted to, to study someone's long-term memory. He, he taught a group of people uh, some things, and then he, he tested how much of that that they remembered after a certain period of time and then he compared different groups in different periods of time. Uh, so, um, uh, yeah, and he, that concluded in this graph, which is uh, called the forgetting curve, uh, a very important curve. Uh, on this uh, vertical axis, we have uh, the person percentage of uh, the things that you memorized from the beginning that you still remember. And on this um, uh, horizontal axis, you have the, the time that has passed since you memorized things. So, uh, if, we, if we imagine just like a normal uh, student setting, like a normal lecture, you're sitting in a lecture, you're memorizing things, you're taking notes, you're quite interested, uh, trying to learn things, uh, and then directly afterwards, you, you may of course be uh, somewhere up here, uh, around 100%, and then it starts to, to go down gradually, uh, and after say three, four days, um, what percentage do you think we will be on uh, after three, four days usually, like average? 50? Yeah, another idea? 70? 30? Yeah? Yeah, that's some good guesses. Uh, the actual findings uh, in these experiments uh, is that after three, three to four days, uh, the average uh, percentage that we still remember is about uh, 5 to 10 uh, percent. <laughs> so, yeah, it goes down really, really quickly. It doesn't look good at all. Uh, <laughs> And this is, yeah, so this is like the, the, the usual case. If you learn something and then, then don't repeat it, but just yeah, don't think about it, then, then it will go down this uh, quickly and then uh, it will stay here at about maybe 2 3% that you will have with you for the rest of your life. Uh, but you obviously lose a lot, a lot along the way. Uh, so this is, this is also the case if you, um, 
if you study, uh, as you might normally study, uh, at least we do it in Sweden, like you, you save all the work until the, the evening before the exam, and then you're reading whatever you have to, to memorize like seven times, uh, then of course it might uh, be a little bit flatter here in the beginning. Uh, you might even uh, be able to, to get a really good grade at the exam and, and get a lot of answers correct, uh, but then it will go down and stay yeah, approximately at, at the same level. So if someone would, would give you the same exam after some weeks, you would probably perform much worse than the first time. Uh, and I'm sure that you also have, have felt this, like, like you're, a lot of time you're, you're putting it in there for the exam and then it goes away and then you have to, to get it in there again next time you want to, to memorize it. Uh, but if you, instead of, of taking these, these seven repetitions uh, on the night before the exam, just uh, listen carefully at the, uh, to the lecture, lecture uh, and then just once after some hours after the, the exam uh, or after the lecture, and uh, maybe later the same day, just quickly go through your, your notes or go through your images in your head, just repeat what you learned quickly, then you will of course jump up again and then it will go down a little slower and stay a little higher. So with this one extra repetition, you might actually uh, twice the amount of information that you, that you, might, that you would have <coughs> left from the beginning. And if you then do the same thing the day after, just quickly again go through your notes, so just think about what you learned, uh, then you'll go up again, and then go down a little bit less steep and uh, end up even higher. So this, this, it's still not high, but it might be five times as much as, as without the repetitions. And then if you do the same thing after some days, uh, after some week, after some month, you'll actually end up flattening out almost here at 100%, or very high at least. Uh, so that means that if you, if you take these, these seven read-throughs and instead of, of placing them all at the same time, like before the, the exam, you just yeah, put them, distribute them over a longer time interval and have longer and longer time in, in between the repetitions, you'll go uh, from here up to here, uh, which is quite a significant uh, difference. Uh, and yeah, with, with the same effort and the same amount of time. So yeah, th this looks really cool, uh, <laughs> I, I suppose, and it's, uh, yeah, it's very nice, uh, very nice with the colors as well, I must say. Uh, and um, yeah, in, in, in the beginning you think, wow, this is brilliant, I, I must start incorporating this uh, immediately. But then you might start thinking practically, and then you realize that you would have to actually write down for everything that you remember, uh, write down that I'm supposed to memorize, uh, to repeat this in, in uh, three days, and this in, in seven and a half weeks, and this in, in 2.3 years, etc and you'd actually have to, to almost hire someone just doing all that work for you. Um, but in today's modern society, there is of course excellent apps for this. Uh, and this one app, like I suppose there are a lot of apps with the same function, but uh, the one that I'm using, it's, it's very nice, very convenient. Uh, it's called Anki, uh, A-N-K-I. Uh, apparently it means uh, to memorize in Japanese. Um, it's, uh, it's actually free for, for Android. If you have Android, it's free. Uh, I think it's called Anki Droid there. Uh, it's also free to download on your computer from the website. Uh, it does cost a little bit for iPhone. I don't really know why. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's definitely worth it. Or maybe you can find something else, some similar app for that. Uh, so the way Anki works is that you, um, every time that you learn something interesting, something that you would like to remember, uh, you'd like to store in your long-term memory, you just uh, put that piece of information in, into the app uh, in the form of a, a question and an answer. Uh, so for example, if you, if you, yeah, you hear uh, after whom America uh, was named, and then you think, oh, I'd like to remember that, then you just put this question and answer inside of the Anki, and then um, you take up your phone, like some minutes uh, every, every morning, and just go through today's Anki, and then it will, after a while, pop up this, this question. And then you just think about it, after whom was America named, uh, someone who knows, yeah, yeah, good guess, but actually it was another guy who got the whole continent named after him. America Vespucci. Yeah, exactly, Amerigo Vespucci. So then you, you might just remember it, or you might have a, uh, a picture of an American, uh, American wasp wearing Gucci or, or something. Uh, or you just, just remember it, and then you think, yeah, it's Ameri Amerigo Vespucci, and then you, you check and say, yeah, that was the right one. And then you just choose uh, if you remembered it, if it was, yeah, you remember it good, or if it was easy or very easy, or if you didn't remember it, then what do you have it again? Uh, and then Anki will, with an algorithm based on this, this forgetting curve, uh, calculate when you need to memorize to repeat this the next time, uh, so that you have to repeat it as, as rarely as possible, uh, but still uh, can be sure that it will stay inside of your brain. So this is really cool. So I, I actually put everything that I want to, to keep in my memory for a long time into Anki, and uh, checks it just some minutes every morning, and, and then I know that it will stay there. 
So I'd like to, to compare Anki to a treasure chest where you put all your memories and you know that they will stay in there. And that's actually, uh, that actually makes it extremely much more motivating uh, when, you, when you're studying because you know that you will actually remember these things for the rest of your life instead of just forgetting them after some days, which is the normal case. So I definitely warmly recommend Anki.